an alligator I'm a mama papa coming for you I'm the space invader I'll be a rock and rolling bitch for you Keep your mouth shut Just squawk a lot This was sent in to us from a listener, and it's something... I think it's like his band, right? David Bowie? Da- David Ross Bowie? It's David Bowie, you guys. The rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust. Just because we're into indie rock doesn't mean we can't support the classics. We were doing a photo shoot, and our photographer, the super talented Michael Levine... Not who, Levine. Michael Levine, who shot the Hello Nasty... Uh, Beastie Boys cover. All he, of them in a uh, sardine can. Yes. Packed like sardines in a can. Uh, in a tin. We got, he did, uh, I believe he did Nirvana. Did he do Nirvana? Never mind. He might have done he that did, too. Yeah, yeah, he did. Just he had, amazing he guy. had someone fluffing the baby's penis he literally before that photo it, shoot. Somewhat erect and thus the uh, yeah. photo shoot happened and that's what it was. And so he was playing this in the background and we thought, you know what? Why not? America, why not? This is another, our third live streamed uh, Sklarbro country. We have such a fun episode today with a, a longtime friend of ours, one of the best improvisers out there. Uh, and a fantastic comedic actor who's been on so much more, most recently. Go uh, on. The show Go On with Matthew Perry. Uh, and there's a great story about how there was a hockey interview done during, uh, a, during Kings, like a Kings game. Kings where Blues game where the, Matthew Perry was there. And he asked him, he said, the announcer said, uh, so I, you got some huge news today. Congratulations are in order, I believe. And Matthew Perry was like, you mean that our show got canceled? Whoops. Yeah, that's like when you want to be minutes fed for information. Sticky. Yeah, I know it's hockey, but you could get a fact-checking crew together. Yeah. So uh, we'll get into that with him about how fun that was and then how sad he is that that's over. But he's been in everything. Uh, Seth Morris, a.k.a. Bob Duca. He had a podcast here, uh, Daily Affirmation. Daily Affirmations or Affirmations with Bob Duca. We'll get into that, too, uh, with him. But And then later on in the show, Rodman. He's, he's been popping up in the news. Oh, Rodman. He's, he's a favorite. He's a VPN here. favorite, I he's would actually say. He's a VPN favorite. Uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, yeah. Snuffleupolis, uh, Upalopolis. Yeah. He will be the here. Fundamental. The I fundamentals. I can teach you the fundamentals uh, of the game. <laughs> uh, he will be here. Fundamentals of the game. Uh, he will be here later in the last segment. Uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for uh, to all of you guys who support us uh, for getting the live show. It's still available in the Earwolf we, store. We have sold about 155. So that we're is, very close to our goal of 10,000 10, sold. <laughs> nice job. Uh, come but on, people. It. It's a great way to support. Three bucks. Sold. Less than a coffee at Starbucks. You can support the show and get some great free live content. Uh, not free, but uh, you live get content. content. Get to hear Paul S. Baldiston, phenomenal interview with that man. Uh, great show. Dave Foley did a cameo. We'll have Dave on, on the show here down in the States, stateside. But super fun. Check that out. Guys, Chicago's coming up, and we're so excited. We're going to do a live podcast from Chicago Thursday night, May 30th. Then the 31st, we have stand-up shows. And the first, we've got two stand-up shows. Get your tickets at the Up Theater. Yeah. If you go to our website, supersclars.com, sign up your email address, and then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you can find it. Uh, all the shows that we're doing coming up over the next period of time, including, we'll put it on there, the the special. We're not sure where we're going to record it. We may do it in Madison. Mm -hmm. We may do it in Milwaukee. We may do it in Minneapolis, Austin, Austin, Portland. You guys tell us where we should do our our hour special, record that, and where the Scalabro fans will be. Mm -hmm. Um, We've got takes that we got to get into, and then we'll get to uh, Seth Morris. But uh, first things first. Every so often, Ran, a Kenny Britt comes along and hands himself on a silver platter to us here at Scalabro Country, and we are happy to feast on the meal that is his absurd action. We we understand that. I, I didn't mean to say that is his actions. That, that are his, his actions. actions. That is a feast. We love it. It, it drives the show. Let's reset briefly. For those uh, who don't know, Kenny Britt was a member of the Tennessee Titans. He was a wide receiver, actually very talented, maybe still is, uh, who led the police on a car chase, ditched his car, probably a DUI suspicion or something like that. And ditched then- it on an off-ramp. Started strolling on an off ramp. Yeah, the way, just walking away. The way, the way of, someone who is like really wealthy in Tennessee, who could probably buy twenty or thirty cars or ten to twelve off ramps, would just walk, walk on a highway off ramp. Would just, just be strolling. You know, you see lots of people strolling on the off ramp. I don't know why that's weird to anyone. So he got arrested, and then the day that he was let out, uh, he was getting his car washed. Sure. Uh, then he decided to smoke a blunt at the car wash. Which who doesn't smoke a blunt? When at a you're car hanging wash? out with strangers, who you just want to get away from. It's a great idea to get high. 
Yeah. Just while you wait for your car. That to just get, feels like a good place to get high. Wait for your mats to get vacuumed. Yeah. Uh, Let me stand so, next to the Ed Hardy floor mats and get high. And That's so, something I want to do. An undercover at. cop smelled it and he got busted again. So when Kenny Britt comes along, we say here in Scalabro Country, that is a gift. And when a Titus Young comes along, he makes Kenny Britt seem like the gift you give on the seventh day of Hanukkah when you're like out of ideas and everyone's tired. Even the kids are tired of getting gifts. It's like worse than socks. It's like here, it's a zip up bin that goes in your sock drawer to hold the socks. No, here's the packaging from last night's present. That's basically what the seventh night of Hanukkah is. Now we should before we get into the story, we got to mention because there are, have been some follow-up. We're going to eat our words. Let's just say it right now. We're going to eat our words. Well, well, I'm going to say we're this. Feel terrible. His about father is coming out, and it's not clear whether he's just trying to sort of divert tamp down, tamp down the problems that this guy. This guy got arrested three times in one week. Let, we'll get into all the details. Why two times within 24 hours? And the dad Father's came saying out. He's got brain damage. Brain damage from a concussion. Now, possible, possible brain concussion. swelling, totally possible, and that he's refusing to take his meds. Fine. That could happen, but here's the deal. You we, get arrested three times in one week. we got to talk about we it. We cannot talk about you we on the show. can't turn a blind eye. People would be disappointed in us. We're going to treat it like a Delonte West situation. Delonte West, who's bipolar. He's diagnosed he's, as bipolar. Uh, he, is, he has had sex with LeBron James's mother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and by the way, this it does not. The second that, Le, that Delonte West shows up Mad Max style on a three wheel motorcycle with three loaded guns, Bowie and, knife, and a Bowie knife, a John Ross Bowie knife, we that is when a David Bowie knife. Yeah. That is when we can step in and make fun of him. And that's where like we that's, are. And that's where so we, are. we don't know yet. You got to take your meds. That's Look, all we're gonna say. If it's a bad situation and if it's terrible, would we'll, you we'll run move. full speed on a broken ankle? I don't think I would. Don't go without your Lex Pro. Take your Lex Pro. That's all we're going to say. That brings us to Titus Young, and we are qualifying the story a lot, but we three do times in one want week. to allow for the fact. Three times in one week when he was out visiting California, he was arrested. I'd say that's a bad trip to California. Even people who were on LSD the night the Hells Angels were doing security on the Rolling Stones at Altamont, and they were tripping, that trip was a better trip, trip than, the, than his trip yeah. when a guy three was ti- stabbed. Who, who is that kind of energy? Three times in one week? I don't know. It's a lot of energy. I'll tell you who doesn't. Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon doesn't have that. That bitch only got arrested once. Once. Do you and know who I am? Do you know who I am? I can't believe she played that card. God, that was that was so LeBron's mom. I can assure you that Titus Young never uttered the phrase, do, do you, you know, know who I am? am? Well, I would just say, do you know who Reese Witherspoon is? Because if you do, good. Yeah. So uh, let's get to it, because the devil is in the details of this one. The uh, only reason we held the story out as long as we did is there maybe was a chance that he was going to get arrested a fourth time. Yeah, we're like, we don't want to miss a detail. You maybe he'll get, And it could still happen again. So on Cinco de Mayo, first up, Titus Young drove drunk. Like yes. many people do on Cinco de Mayo. Yes, yes. He was observed by Moreno Valley uh, California police officers. They observed his black Mustang making a legal left turn. See, observe for me makes it seem like they're at like the Audi test driving like school. Yeah. And, and they're observe, just observed. They have someone's a got a clipboard. And Observing like, tells me that there is a clipboard. There's a clipboard and white lab coats. It to me is That's like what it feels like like the Cheez It commercials, which I think should be way funnier than they are. But they're not. They're just not funny. They're saying that the cheese hasn't matured yet. But you could have got, which I think is a good concept. Good concept. Up, but too slow in the editing for those things. Like I would have the, I'd have like the 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 cheese, the wheel of cheese, reading like Beverly Cleary. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's got to mature, mature a little bit more. And then when right. he gets to Judy Bloom, can so cheese to jerk some... off? Can cheese jerk off? That's my question. Maybe should cheese whiz. Uh, Thank you. Secondly, if you had a lot to drink and you're driving. You should really stick to the rules of the Don't road. make an illegal left turn. You should stick exactly to the rules That's of the That's not when you want to be testing things out. You I, I can, you think you I can make a left here? I, I could probably I could, pro- I could probably make a left here. should never enter your vocabulary. If you have to ask an imaginary person in the car with you if you should make a move in your car, don't, don't do, do it. it. Especially if you're drinking. You've had too much to drink. So Titus Young gets pulled over, booked for suspicion of a DUI, and his car is impounded. Now- it sucks, but it's Cinco de Mayo. You're probably going to be in a pen with a lot of other people who normally Festive aren't there. people. Maybe there'll it's be a pen. There might be a party. There, there might know. be a piñata. So, Something's going to get beaten. Well, you don't even have to be Latino to drive drunk on Cinco de Mayo. We, we know that. We it's know like that. a Jew getting blitzed at a St. Patrick's Day party. No one's going to fault no you. No one's going to be upset. They understand it. Drinking is part of the holiday. It's a margarita kind of day. If I'm on the cut, if I'm like on the police force, if, if you're I'm on the cop, beat on, on Cinco de Mayo, I need to make my ticket quota. I'm just gonna hang out right down the street from Casa Gallardo. There it is, Casa Gallardo. Casa Gallardo, which was a which, Mexican, by the way, restaurant, Mexican in restaurant in St. Louis. Louis, which we always Ga- wish. House of Gallardo. 
<laughs> what the hell is that? Casa, and you can't say Gallardo without sounding like St. Louis. a St. Louis person who can't, doesn't speak Gallardo. <laughs> Casa Gallardo. Casa Gallardo. You probably want to wait for your car to be released from the impound, though, Titus Young, before you head off with it. That's the, that's the other rule. Yeah, hopping the fence and trying to steal your car back from the impound is... That lot. is probably not the most suggested way to retrieve your vehicle after it's been impounded. From the impound lot. Am, I, am sure, I wrong to say that? I'm sure there's some paperwork you have to fill out. There's I definitely mean, there's, paperwork. There's always paperwork to fill out for everything you do. ID. ID. You have to show your ID. That has to be shown. There's, there's like, definitely like a protocol for what you need to do. Like hopping a fence would not be something. That's that, never that something. That was like, you're done. You're good. All you right, show me your ID. Fill to, this thing out. Then hop, hop that, that fence, fence and go get your car. <laughs> no one ever says that at the impound. That's part of the plan. But Titus no. was determined to get his car back right then and there. Didn't want to wait for it. Probably he didn't want to wait the extra 15 minutes or F so. F that. He's getting that thing right now. Well, he still has alcohol in the system. He yes, get he that could get car. another DUI. I still have to pull that thing off. So they somebody observed him doing it, and they found him doing it, and then he was basically sent back to the same detention center he just gotten out of. That had to be a great moment. Hey, what are you doing back here, Titus? We just really you what? You you they were going to get your they were pulling your car around. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? By the way, hopping over a fence anywhere near a police station, I would just say is never advised. It just makes you look suspicious. There's even no if way. you're not doing anything wrong, even if you're just practicing going over a fence. Even if you're saving back. a burning baby, which I don't know how often bur- babies burn, but like if a bur- a baby is burning, Baby on fire, you're jumping a fence. People are going to be like, what Expect are you doing? someone to be like, hey, 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 hey you whoa. can't go over that fence. And then you have to be like, there's, there's a, burning a burning child baby. right here. You're going to oh, have to explain go ahead. yourself. Go ahead, but still, man. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Yeah. Somewhere you shouldn't be. People, you're doing something you shouldn't do somewhere where you shouldn't be. People with access use the door. That's all we're saying. By the way, he tried to get the car in the afternoon. This happened at 2.22 in the afternoon. Yeah. If you're trying to steal a car from a fenced off impound lot, you got to do that at night. Like two in the morning. Where there are no employees. Trying that in the afternoon is a certain takes a certain set of brass balls. Maybe even if it's cloudy, it's still daylight. Yeah, this is where it's it's dripping into that okay, area. That where should I don't have know. been it for this guy. Just an awful day filled with bad decisions made by one guy driving drunk. And this, by the way, his history is that he was on the Rams and they claimed him off of waivers er- earlier well, this he was, year. He was terrible, uh, not terrible. He was actually a talented uh, wide, wide receiver, receiver but, a, guy, but nut uh, job. just a nut job. And finally, Detroit couldn't handle him anymore. Then the Rams picked him up off of waivers. Then ten days later, they're like, "We can't handle this. We can't handle ten days." But Sunday night. After he'd been arrested twice, he broke into a house in San Clemente, California. Broke into the home, maybe trying to steal another car. I don't know what he was doing. His was in the impound. Maybe he still thought, thought it was maybe there. Maybe he another car. But the homeowner said he heard someone in his house. He was loading his shotgun to shoot the guy. Cops showed up. Of course, Titus Young ran, which, again, people, please. We're going to talk directly to the camera if we can. If you get busted by the cops, don't run. Yeah. You will never outrun them. Don't, don't think They'll never co- give up. Don't think the cops aren't tenacious. They, they're to na- they're going to come after you. Once they're in the chase, the chase doesn't end until that's, you're caught. That's all they're doing. That's how those chases all end. They end with the guy getting caught. It's not like they're going to spot you a lead of 100 yards and then just stop when they get they're tired. They're just like, oh, God. Well, so, he, so he was run down, mm-hmm. which I'm sure the cops who ran him down, Jay, were probably like, I, na- I have NFL combine speed. Yeah, they're like, I what just, was my time in that for? I just, I just ran him down. I ran him down. Don't forget that he's probably still drunk. And of course, what did he do after that? He gets in a fight with the guys who ran him down. Smart. Always punch a cop. Cops are hey, always, always going to respect them. Chase you. They're going to respect. They love your moxie. That. They're they, going to respect the moxie. Cops love it when they when you make them chase them, and then when they get to you, you start fighting them. Do you know how everybody loves when you make their job more difficult? Yes. Cops love it even more. Yeah. Cops are like, I just please. <laughs> I, this so job is this. easy. This job is too easy. I need you to make it more difficult. My life is on the line. Is there any way you can? complicate this more for me. This was not, by the way, a home of a relative or a friend. It was somebody he didn't know. Maybe Titus Young looked in the house and said, you know what? I'm going to watch some Netflix. This house looks pretty Netflixy. I'm going to watch some Netflix. I'm going to watch some Netflix. i got to catch up on the first couple of episodes of Mad Men from last year. I don't know if this year's Mad Men is on Netflix yet, but last year. Who am I? Well, I don't know if he would know something like that. If this is a guy who stole a car at 222 in the afternoon anything's from an impound possible. lot, anything's possible. Now, I kind of want 
embattled former Tennessee Titan quarterback Vince Young, who's had a world of problems himself. Everybody had him on suicide watch. He's there was spent an, all his money, like forty five thousand dollars at a Chili's. Uh, he or, or at a Bennigan's or something like that. I love that we both gave different numbers, and neither of us is trying to correct the other person. Nope. You said forty five thousand. I said three hundred thousand. Oh, it was three hundred thousand. Maybe there's an imposter of his, like a, a. There was a Vince Young imposter was going to parties. Impersonator. Imperson- impersonator who was going to parties as him, but then it got so bad for Vince Young that I think that guy just stopped doing it. He was like, I can't. I got to change my Vince. look. I got to have plastic surgery. I can't be this guy. So I want him, Vince Young and Titus Young, to be newly deputized mall cops mm-hmm. who can't seem to stay out of trouble themselves. What do you call it? Problems with being young. I would say young and younger. I would call it Youngry Like the Wolf. How about We Are Young, theme song by Fun? Love it. How about that? How about The Young and the Restful? How about Young, Dumb, and Having Fun? Again, theme song by Fun. Fun. I watch all these shows. They're, at least they're better than L.A. Shrinks, which is a show that maybe he'll go on. I don't know. Maybe. LA, although I have watched a lot of L.A. Shrinks. You have not watched that. I've watched Shrinks. a ton of it. Terrible. It's the worst. It, not only does it make you hate L.A., it makes you hate psychology. It, hate, it makes me hate things that shrink. Like, it makes me hate old people for shrinking. It makes me hate shrinky dinks. It, make me, it makes me hate anything that actually does fall That back. was once larger and has, and has since now gotten, gotten smaller. smaller. Now, Jay, I don't have to tell you, but tennis dads are just flat out weird. You don't have to tell me. If you don't believe us, look at Richard Williams, Serena and Venus's dad. He's got more cameras than B&H photos. Hi! Even though his kids are probably the most photographed athletes, nay, people of all time. Yeah, someone should probably tell him, hey, buddy, you know, you can just get some digital files on this stuff. Just share it. Better photographers than you than you with better equipment than you will have these files. We'll one, share them with One you. word misspelled, flicker. Yeah. But that's the thing. Tennis dads. Just they, enjoy your kids. Tennis do dads, it from out from the, in behind the Jay, frame. Tennis dads do not enjoy their kids. They don't. If you're, wa- if you're watching a kid or young adult play tennis on television... Let me say this. You know that behind every kid playing tennis on television is a crazy dad somewhere who is in the stands that the kid is just happy to be away from for, for four, four hours. hours. I'm in a match now. I don't have to listen Please to Please let guy. the tiebreaker go on. That's how much these guys screw up these kids. Because tennis, I'm going to say this, is a world sport. So you're not just competing with the best players in America. You're not competing with the best players in England. your little country, in right. England or Australia or whatever. They're all competing with each other on one stage. Yeah. In it's the, a unified belt. So if you make it to the pro tennis level and you're still a teenager, your dad had to quit his job and made you his job. And you better not let him down because he's got a lot of resentment sort of bubbling right underneath the surface. And if you don't believe us, just ask 19-year-old Australian tennis phenom Bernard Tomix. Crazy ass father John Tomic. He was forced to appear in Madrid court last week for allegedly headbutting his son Bernard's practice partner in the head. Let me let me start. He headbutted him in the head. He, well, that was smart that he headbutted him in the head because he could have headbutted him in the shoulder. Let me start with this: If you're appearing in court in another country, you you you, have, up. you screwed up. You because up. it's court. Now I'm not, there, plenty of people have been thrown in jail in other countries for no reason. Midnight but Express. If, if you're going to court. That means that you screwed up, and their judicial system it has you now. Now you got their judicial. You're, you're, you're getting Knox. a fair trial. You're given a quote chance. unquote. You're, you're, there's a chance for you to represent yourself, but you screwed up. This so is, you're in court. Is, this is France. Stay in court. In another country is for something you did, <laughs> and that is on you. Something Say like, what you want about France. They're letting this guy have his day in court. Something there this is what you, it's on you. Something like headbutting your son's practice partner, Thomas Druet. 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 He's French. Remember that Drouet. scene in the Bad News Bears where Vic Morrow went to the mound and hit his kid with the hat? That was hard to watch. I watched that. It was very hard to watch. It was flat fun. out wrong. That was his kid, though. Nut- this this in this case headbutted headbutt- another kid. Someone who wasn't his kid because he wasn't practicing hard enough. We talking about practice? Talking about what is a practice partner's job? I, like, what could he have done to to deserve the headbutt? Short of getting Tomic's son hooked on heroin or bath salts, I don't that's know what. A, that's not a reason. That's not. A, there's no reason to headbutt another person. Was he beating his son? Maybe. I don't know. We talking about practice. Tomic, by the way, had to have his father completely removed from another match. Yeah, this was another time I actually saw the video. The son told the chair umpire. Uh, he goes to the match. chair umpire on a switch, and he's like, you got to get him out of here. I know he's, he's my father, me. but he's annoying me. He wanted him ejected from the game from just after every point. He would turn back, Shake. and his dad was just shaking his head disapprovingly. 
throughout the entire match, which I get wanting to get rid of that. That is a douche bag move. Bag move. Back to the head bunny. According to Druitt, who is from Monaco, which like we'll get into that in a second. Uh, Tomic, maybe now I kind of want to headbutt the guy. Tomic, in addition to headbutting and treated him like a dog. He treated me like a dog, Mr. Waller. He is sort of my human decency, he Mr. He treated Waller. me like a dog. I mean, I just saw that, by the way. Totally, totally holds up. That whole movie. Holds I up. don't want to play devil's advocate here, but uh, let's get back to the fact that the guy's from Monaco. And he's a tennis stud. Even if he's just a practice part, practice he's partner. Practicing he's practicing like a world-class guy. He's probably the best tennis player in his, all of his circles. Yeah. Like, I, I, my, my guess is this guy, if he was given plain label potato, potato chips, chips in his private locker. In his locker. That is what he's For him, that's treated like that's a dog. That's being treated like a dog. He, he doesn't have his own, like, neck towel. According like a dog. to Druitt, Tomic asked him to go buy him a carton of milk. The dad. The dad asked the practice partner to buy him a carton of milk while they were waiting to go to the airport. You know, the way you just want to down a dairy product right before you get on a pressurized aircraft and <laughs> go get with me some stuff. milk. Drew, and- <laughs> get me milk. I need lactose. And Drew it said no. And then Tomic spat in his face, allegedly. Said he wasn't going to pay Drew it. And Drew it was like, oh, you're a real man, John. That's fine. Bernard, your son, will pay me. Then he headbutted him. Then he headbutted him. Which so now it's about now he can now actually about the milk. It's about pro- no, it's about protecting his son from having to pay. Before we side with Druid, it should be noted that he showed up in court with a plaster bandage over his nose and the, the old, old school neck, like the neck Brady race. Bunch neck race. My kids saw that Brady Bunch for episode. a headbutt. I was trying to explain for a headbutt. <laughs> throw a book on the floor. Throw a tennis. Throw throw, throw a whole a racket. Ba- a bag of Yonix tennis rackets on the floor and <laughs> see, see if, if the guy turns his head. For a head, a neck brace for a headbutt. I get the plastic. I get thing the, on the nose. nose thing. I get the it. nose thing works, but the neck thing, neck brace seems a little extreme. Extreme. I don't know. I, maybe he deserved a good headbutting. Maybe he deserved a good headbutting. I don't know. I would. Uh... I, by the way, I'm going to tell you this. Law, I love Tomic's lawyer's explanation yeah. of what happened. According to John Tomic, this is the lawyer, he had only struck Dre with his head because his arms were being held by Dre, and he had to protect himself from falling over. Yeah. When your main defense is to admit that you head by the guy. That's not a good case. <laughs> That's not airtight. Yeah, I headbutted him, but I had to protect myself from falling oh, yeah. over. <laughs> so he held you know, my when you're arms. Falling over, your first instinct is to go. Is like to that. hit the person who's holding you. When you're falling this way, you're. First, uh, let me get it up. Let me get forward and head. Some, let me use the full force of my body so I don't accidentally fall down. This is a great story. All right, we have great other quick hits. We'll get to those later with uh, the great Seth Morris. I'm telling you, I downloaded this whole album. I love it so much. They get the backlash. To me, they're like the strokes of this era. Screw the backlash. Vampire Weekend. Go pick up Modern Vampires of the City. It is such a good summertime album. I'm so proud of these guys for sticking through the backlash. I think they're going to make it. I think <laughs> they're going to make it. With a little bit of elbow little bit grease, of people are going to get to know Vampire uh, This Weekend. is Sklarbro Country, episode 147 on VPN. You're watching, streaming live. You're listening to it uh, after the fact. Enjoy the audio. Seth Morris, right after this. All right, everybody, we are back. Welcome back to Sklabro Country 147. You see the guest chair is full. Uh, the studio is full. I want to thank, by the way, Frank Capello on the uh, For making us look ones. ugly. Thank you. By, by transitive properties. We're all, like, devolving as, right? Yeah. He's too good looking, right, Too good Seth? looking to be he does not. He's me. too good looking to be named Frank Capello. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey, hey, Frank. He should be a big fat guy with hairy shoulders <laughs> yeah. that, sitting on a milk crate. And his shoulder, like, hey. why, why do the hairiest of shoulders always have to be exposed? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, no, that's not something to be yeah. proud of. Yeah. yeah. I guess, like. Why don't you get some sleeves? Hey. <laughs> you you're stupid. too cheap to buy sleeves, hey. Frank. Anyway. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Deltoid. Hey. Uh, so uh, Seth Morris is with us. Seth, Seth, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So I guess congratulations is enough. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Weird. I mean, I can't believe you didn't see that. But... I did not see that. And of all people, that's so funny. And it sounds like Matthew handled it really well. He Matt, did. Matthew's a big hockey guy. Yeah. He actually played on a charity in a charity game with this guy who who oh. interviewed him. So it's like they had a history, but yeah, like yeah. the guy clearly yeah. wouldn't you want to like beforehand just say, hey, so I'm gonna talk to you about your show. Well he heard that there was some news. Yeah. <laughs> right. He knew that there, there was something going but, on. But hey, hey should should we should we find out what the news is? No, 
Like, you know what? I got a good feeling about this. I gotta, <laughs> Honestly, it could go either way. So what's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the worst thing that could happen. And it did happen. Yeah. Yeah. Such Terrible. a bummer because you were great on that show. And uh, it, it was a sportsy show in, in, yeah. in ways. Uh, how fun was that to be a part of? And It and, was you know, great. And how psyched are you that it's coming back? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we're going to do it as dinner theater. You know? <laughs> we're going to go to Burt, Burt Reynolds uh, Dinner Theater in Florida. Uh, just do it. In Jupiter, Florida. No, it was great. It was my first sort of network experience. Um, regular as a regular on a show. Yeah. Show up um, to the lot. Yep, yep. Got it. a name tag and a, you know, uh, you know all those parking space perks. felt good, right? Yeah, yeah. Felt good, and felt then better were, than it should have. And then you were mad that it was shown to you so that it could be taken away. Exactly. It's like here's the curtain, kid. Oh yeah. This is what like who, like who's on a sitcom like every year? Yeah. Like there are those people who are on a sitcom every year. Here's what this oh, guy. I think there's can... a Sarah Chalk out there who's always on something. Oh, there is. Are you and kidding? She they don't throw one. away her nameplate. No, they every just move single it. lot yeah. in. In Los Angeles, yeah. is like, do you get, did you have the chalk plate? Yeah, the chalk plate. Plates, since we got yeah, it for yeah. the next couple of years. Although that would be its own special kind of hell. Like I have friends who who they don't they more they kind of get pilots every year and those pilots never go. Yeah, yeah. which that would be very very That's frustrating. So, hard. so to be honest, it, it does make you say to yourself, how does anything ever get made? Like, yeah. how does it get made? So then when you're on something and you can participate on it, which we were on the show Partners this past fall, yeah. went for a few episodes. We were on it and shot a few episodes. So much fun. And, of course, you're like, oh, man, I wish this was. And you just yeah. get a glimpse and you're like, oh, this is it. This is what it's going to be for yeah. a while. We get to do this. It is funny, too. Like, no matter, I think, probably who you are and how long you've been in the business, there's always that thing of, like, this is it. Here yeah, we go. It's, it's it. happening. And you know you shouldn't be that way. Yeah, because you know 95% of the time, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not, not going to happen. happen. It's not going to yeah. stay for you. But uh, worked <laughs> with our good friend, uh, Susie Nakamura, who is yes, yes. so funny. Yeah, she's she, awesome. She's a great improviser. She was in too. Held Up, which was this thing that we did. Oh, with, the, uh, with Hubel? No. The, that the, different, different, different okay, thing. Different, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. The ours is, but we shot in the same was Crazy. Because Rob Hubel did a show called The Hold Up. Which was a web series, mm-hmm. uh, and it had not yet come out until we started shooting at this bank. We didn't know anything about it. All of a sudden, it comes out, and we're now a day into shooting. And by the way, we had shot this yeah. thing because it was a pilot that Comedy Central did that we were two cast years ago, in yeah, yeah. long before Hold Up was even an idea. Yeah. So, so like the timing so of it was all Sony owned it, and then they came back later and were like, "Hey, do you guys want to make a web series out of this?" Since it never got picked up by Comedy Central, and we said, "Great!" And so we just started working on it. They found a bank that worked, and we were like, "Great!" And then, then their thing came from the same thing. Ours yeah. called Held Up. This is Hold Up. Yeah. It was different. It was played out different. I mean, look. Of course. No, I, that that same exact same thing has happened to me where it's the same sort of title or premise is happening and to, you know. What was the thing? What was it called? Can you not talk about it? I maybe shouldn't. All right, let's it's not everything's it. fine now, but it was like it was. Well, this was called. It was called, dicey. The, it was called it was, the Great Gatsby. It was called the Great Gatsby. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why did they have to uh, then? Yeah, why yeah. did F. Scott Fitzgerald have to write the book about it? I mean, Effer, come on, you man. you wrote a whole thing about 1920s <laughs> glamorous life called the Great Gatsby. Then yours was one improvised day, though. Yours yeah. was totally one improvised. One day into shooting, you found out about F. Scott F. Scott Fitzgerald's famous. Mine book. was called the Great Gabby. It was about this cat. <laughs> So smart. Was, yeah. And he but was a tabby. And then who convinced you to change it to Gatsby? That was whoever that is. That person. That person. My ex manager. That you was go. really dumb. He's that's why it. you're out of the picture, bitch. That's you hear right. that? You hear that? And that's right. a man. I wasn't being misogynist. That no. Is a man. Uh, <laughs> was acting well, this man. is a sports comedy podcast, and you are a very tall individual and coordinated. Mike. Well, are guess. you seven one? What are you? <laughs> seven. I'm six four, but I'm I'm skinny right now, so I probably look taller. Than you're were you six fatter? Four? I've you know, I, depending on how much booze I'm drinking at the time, I'm yeah. puffier or, or thinner. Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm, but you always seem like you. Yeah, I'm 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 svelte. And you're guy. one of the few people that's six four, but with a five eight wings. Man. Right. Is that so, true? Exactly. Tiny arms. <laughs> exactly. Your wingspan is just. Is it like, tiny arms? I just have long elbows. Yeah, you have long <laughs> elbows and just no yeah. upper arm. Right. No upper so arm. you. So you. Did you play basketball growing up? I played basketball um, from third grade all the way through through ninth grade, and I, you know, kind of in high school, you're sort of like, am I going to be a, this guy or that guy? And I started. Totally. I was starting to discover drama and stuff then. Yep. More seriously. And uh, but I was like, no, I'm gonna play because uh, I played with my best friend also, who happened to be my next door neighbor. Who well. happened to be Michael Jordan? <laughs> who happened to be Michael Jordan? <laughs> no, but I, I stopped playing basketball uh, after ninth grade because I had this horrible, horrible, nasty coach. Who yeah. was it? 
Who was it? Can oh, you I'll name t- him? Oh, yeah. Name, name check him. is yeah. that. He sounds like an asshole. His name is Jim DeRuscio. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, you got DeRuscio? And every time I tell that Dur- story, people are like, oh. yeah. And he was this little short. He was like 5'2". Five 5'2". Two, uh-huh. And five at two. the time, he was... Um, Even Muggsy Bugs is like, man, yeah. so small. Small. At the time, he was getting into the army, and Ugh. he was like bragging to us about, you know, just a just a ne- just a typical insecure guy. He was a fitness nut, right? In incredible shape, incredible right. shape, right? And uh, and he was t- he just like he'd go he he'd kind of like start each practice with a speech, and one one day it was like, you know, I went to took the army test this weekend, I got a ninety nine. <laughs> Guys, they've never seen anything like that. You know what it is? It's hard work, it's dedication, like that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they've God. never Jeez. seen. Anytime anybody says they've never seen anything, yeah, they're, like all, it. they're only the army. But I'm the, sure they've never <laughs> yeah. seen that. I'm, I'm sure, sure the yeah. sure a couple of, of Green people. Berets got a hundred on <laughs> yeah, that exactly. thing, like yeah. ninety-nine yeah. on the They desk. want to be a Navy SEAL and a Green Beret, out of but all, I can't do both. <laughs> out of all the thing, years, the one percentile I didn't get was being tall enough to be allowed in the army. Wish I grew two inches during the test. How cool is that? He was this. He was just this. He just made you hate basketball. He made me hate basketball. So so I had long hair. I was kind of like a rocker at the time. And he just, you know, singled me out and just yeah. did not like me. And he would do things like, he would do things like. You oh, know, he hated you. You he were, didn't like you were me. basically protesting his war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he, this was in the late 60s, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Late 60s, late 80s. Yeah. He goes, uh, he, he, he'd he do things like, you know, we'd be running drills. He'd be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, Morris. <laughs> Sh- come here, Sh- show him. This is how not to do it. <laughs> no, no. He and said then, this is how no. not to do it. He goes. He goes uh, at I one use point. That on my kids. He goes. Um, mm-hmm. And then there was a kid who, after a while, the parents were complaining like, sure. "This is supposed to be who fun." Is this, this and asshole? that. He does this whole like um, untouchables thing where he de- like opens a practice with. He's like, you know, um, I know things have been tense. <laughs> You know, I've been getting some some complaints from some of the parents, and he starts talking about, you know, I do this for you guys. I do, I'm, I push you hard. If he's I holding you, a baseball bat and walking behind behind you, right? your head, more or less. <laughs> Listen, golf this. club. This <laughs> is this is how crazy he is because he knew he. In retrospect, it's like this twenty three year old guy messing with ninth grade kids. Fourteen year old. Fourteen year old. Fourteen year old. Yeah. And he starts telling this whole speech. He's like, so if I'm hard on you, you know, it's for your own good, but I cannot have my authority Question. uh, challenged. Question. Yeah. yeah. So Greg, Todd. You come with me. <laughs> he walks these kids out of the thing. Yeah. He come back. He comes back alone. No. They're off the team. They're off the team. That's wow. how he starts because practice. Because his parents. Because the parents, parents complained. Made a big deal. Wow. So he did this whole thing and then made a point to like walk all the way. You know, like the basketball. And you know. because he's five two, it's gonna take yeah, him even yeah. longer to Twice get there. Twice as long. And, and the best part was he goes at one point we were going to an away game, <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to quit so bad. My parents were like. No, you should stick, stick it out. It out. Stick Don't it let out. him Don't get you. Don't be a quitter. I understand that as a parent <laughs> also. As a parent, but you're like, dude, you have no idea how, how yeah. big of a douchebag he is. But now, sit, like, I understand if my kids wanted to quit, like, gymnastics or whatever, right, and they had a douchebaggy coach, which they don't. I would right. be like, you can't quit. you got to see it through to the end. But now sitting here with you as my friend being like, yeah. you're like I'm like, you should have quit. You should definitely totally, quit. Totally, totally. So, so we were going to this away game, and it was kind of, you know, finally, like, kind of fun and, like, you know, when you're on the bus for team stuff, it's fun. Yeah. It's a little mini road trip. It's enjoyable. And people are, it's actually people kind of laughing and joking. He's kind of laughing and joking with people. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, Morris, come here. <laughs> He's like, man, I had a dream about you last night. Whoa, go, oh boy. What? Like this. I go yeah. like this. He goes, I swear to God. He goes, I had a dream about you last night. I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I had a dream. I shot you in the face with a <laughs> shotgun. What? <laughs> no. He's like, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. And I, you know, like, I don't remember what the dream was because I had that, like, fake yeah. smile. Of, like, did a, an adult just say that? <laughs> that didn't him? just happen. Just, did he, that, that didn't just come out of an adult's mouth. I mean, yeah. listen, he did get a 99 on that dream. Yeah. So, uh, the other, the it, other little tag I have about Jim Drusho is I think it was in the school paper. Somehow there was an interview with him. It was after, oh, this must have been in like 12th grade. So it was after I had stopped. Um, I think he kept teaching track or something. Anyway, there was an interview with him, and one thing they said is like, "Who better to teach the hurdles?" Oh my God! Than five foot two Jim DeRusio. The, the he goes, uh, they're, they're like Jim Drusio. He's done this, this, and this, and he's like, and he's never had an injury except for once when somebody accidentally threw a javelin into his back. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that was no accident. Yeah, was no Somebody accident. was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it had been He's me. He's far enough away. I can hit him with <laughs> yeah. this javelin. Yeah. That's and either I, the most accurate. No, that, that's yeah. the conversation you have. Like, there were times where we were in, like, huge lecture halls at Michigan. And we'd be seeing people and we'd be like, how much would we change this entire this entire moment if I threw this 
<laughs> bottle at our professor's head yeah. right now. That's probably yeah. what preceded that. Like, yeah. that could, I what if probably... I hit him in the back with a javelin? <laughs> yeah. You, how about the time when Jay, <laughs> Jay at our school newspaper was? Oh, I was the I was the sports reporter for our school newspaper, Ooh. and I there was a kid. <laughs> He was Ryan. a Ryan Unterreiner, a cross country runner, and probably Ryan Unterreiner. Unterreiner, which sounds like you have like a urinary tract infection. Or yeah. he's the guy who the your loan paperwork has to go to. He's the last person. Has <laughs> you, have you? Sent he's it? an underwriter. He's Unterreiner a, is an underwriter. Have you sent it to the Unterreiner? No. <laughs> he's got to put his stamp of approval. He needs to see the last three months of my bank statement. All right, so so I'm writing an article about him, and like it's senior year, second semester, we're partying. I'm like, oh fuck, we still have to do the paper stuff we still have to do yeah, stuff. and and i and so i am so beyond <laughs> like checking what things are what they mean don't I, don't qualify it I, do not qualify so it. i'm writing about the way he ran cuz i had to go watch him run and then like describe it and i described him as a <laughs> as a young, young gelding, gelding. <laughs> which is a castrated horse <laughs> And then that goes out in the paper. Uh, and I had to write an, an entire apology to his family. I had to call what? his parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because the they're like, runs what? like you, wouldn't runs you like want to run like, like a guy with a, with no junk? Yeah. yeah. You got exactly. no balls. You're no uninhibited. Yeah. He owes but, me an apology. That's right. Where's my Unterreiner apology? Yeah. You don't want the opposite. Like, that guy runs weird like he has giant balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at his yeah. elephant balls weighing oh, around. That's terrible. You don't want that. It was pretty sweet, though, I got to. I have to admit. And there was a girl named Heather Ming who was a softball player. <laughs> and I said that she had started the, <laughs> the Ming, Ming Dynasty. Dynasty. <laughs> Even though she, she was, was the a, only one. That's well, There's <laughs> nothing no, wrong with that, is that, Is that, that classic? Racist? If she starts winning and she creates the <laughs> Ming Dynasty? <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I did think it was weird that I said Confucius say she good. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Uh, Terrible. So uh, I want to do a couple, just just find out, and then we'll come back and do quick hits with you. But uh, your your origins are, you kind of were at the beginning of-, of Were you the, of... Set the first group past- uh, past the original four of UCB? Or first I was, second? yeah, more or less in that first what wave. What was the name of your- people? You were- what team oh, were you on? You... Gosh. Well, I mean, like, I was never on a great improv team, but I was in a sketch group. I met my sketch group there. It was Naked Babies. Naked Babies, that's right. That's Rob Corddry, Corddry, Brian Husky, and John Ross Bowie. Such good, like, just so, the Yeah, best and the best. My, my first improv class there is where I met Corddry, and, and that I, I won't say that's what, but that was one of the things, you know, like, I started meeting, and Jamie Dembo, actually, who was just in. Um, yeah, in that, just on that uh, Ron, commercial, yeah, Ron, Ron and Beverly. Beverly. Um uh, but you know that that was that was I, I had no idea what long form improv was before I saw an ass cat, and that whole experience of seeing that and then and and taking classes in it and meeting people it was one of the first times I met people that were funny the way that I was funny. You know, right. I was yeah. Sort of like, I was like, oh, this is what me and my friends have been doing all the time. Like, okay, so you're like, I can thing. take the skills that I've been doing all my life and yeah. now apply that to something. Yeah. So you found okay, I'm a home because you had basically. seen improv before. I'd seen but short was... form and stuff, but I had never seen. Long form. I had no. And for the, those who don't know what the the difference between long form and short form, long form is essentially long form is you get basic. You can get as little as one word, and from that one word, through a process of different scenes, tools, and stuff. you're going to do like a little half hour play right. or longer. It's so great. as opposed to short form, where it's like. We'll, we'll stop, and this is in this game. We'll do this, and then you stop, and then okay. Now this game, we'll do this. Totally different storylines, yeah. totally different subject material, and the, I mean, to me, the best is the long forms that have two acts, yeah. where you do a bunch of scenes in the first act, and characters come up, and you can revisit the characters yes. again, and then in the second act of it, you're bringing up new characters, but then at the very end, the characters from the first one yeah. come back again. It's like, oh my god, we just basically you are showing them how you basically knit an afghan in yeah, front yeah. of an audience yeah. right yeah. there. As As it it's is. a little bit. I mean, well, we're already sounding, or I'm already sounding pretentious. It's a little bit more like theater than 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 short form because you're telling a whole story and exploring characters. And so anyway, yeah, I was I was like lucky enough to be in that first wave of 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 people like you know with like Rob Riggle and Rob Hubel and Paul Shear and Owen Burke and on and on and on. Have you? Do you feel like because we're about to go to Chicago and do the Up Theater, mm -hmm. uh, which is part of Second City, which you know, growing up for us, that was it. Like we went to Chicago. I remember going to Second City. That was a big deal. That you was mean, part of our trip. Like as, oh, yeah. ki as kids, as like high schoolers, we're like, we want to go to Chicago so that we can see where the comedy came from and yeah. see. As the fans next of comedy too, you're like, oh, in SNL, you're yeah. like, oh, this is where it kind of started. So I mean, it's amazing that in our lifetime and certainly in our profession 
professional lifetime, UCB has sort of yeah. become that. Yeah. So like when p- kids come to LA or go to New York, you're like, oh, I guess I got to start taking classes at UCB. Yeah. They just do. Yeah. It's such an interesting thing that it's become an institution. And yeah. we remember when those guys came and, and you know, when they and were started doing... in New York. I definitely feel lucky to be a part of something that's become a thing, you know. It's it's. Uh, I mean, I, I won't really have that up. Opportunity. Again. I think very few people do. Like, yeah. just as there was a Second City book, I don't know if you read the Second City book. Oh yeah, uh, so good, so yeah. interesting. I think eventually or shortly, you probably could write the UCB book. Oh yeah, and it would be a story of. Comedy. Well, it is like it is like sports in that they say that like small it's a farm system. Well, or small like like big time impact people and players come into like the NBA draft once every ten years, like. It was Jordan, and then it was Kobe, and then LeBron, and now there's a kid who just got uh, uh, committed to Kansas, who they're saying is the next potentially like game changing guy. But like tons of great people in between, but only a few institutions. Right. Right. And I feel like UCB is one of them, if not. Did you grow up in Chicago? Or no? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in 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 the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Oh, so are you like a Golden State Warriors? Did you watch them as a kid or no? Not not really. I I wasn't. You know, I like to play sports. I never really liked to watch them. Yeah. Um. And and uh, and then especially after night, Jim Jerusha just ruined it. God, he ruined everything for you. Yeah, he man. Ruined, he ruined sex. Oh, no, for actually, you. he probably got me into drama. You know, he probably made me he, commit he, more. So like, you know what? He had a great function. Yeah. For you. Had he I'm, not pushed you away from it, what if he was like the best guy ever and so nurturing? You'd be trying to make some sports team right now. Totally. And that when I really probably couldn't have, you know, no, you I was just tall. Calling. Really, You're my just ability was running that I was a tall. basketball camp for underprivileged <laughs> youth. So actually, you would have been doing something good. Yeah. As so, opposed to being so narcissistic, just trying to get yourself work. Exactly. Which is what you're doing now. Totally. God. You know what? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Ugh. Damn it. Let's it's, take a goddamn kind of, break. Jim Jerusio. <laughs> he's really, he's, he's overtaken this podcast now. Yes. <laughs> All five foot two of him. He's like infiltrated this this system right here. I bet, like, and I'm not saying this because I, I bet he had a big, like a big cock. I'm not oh, saying. Oh, I'm sure. I, I, and I'm not trying to guess that, and I don't have any he's, interest you know what, in that. Thing, he's going to win in the end. Race. He will he be a gonna winner. Win. He'll in the win. End. Yeah. He's going to win. Look, you don't just get a 99 on that test. <laughs> uh, this is the Beatles, the Beatles. Who is that? Who's that? I've got a feeling, Jay, that this next, it's called I've Got a Feeling. i got a feeling this next uh, segment is going to be fantastic. We've got crazy fun stories about uh, guys who go bowling with guns in their pockets uh, that's enough. That's, that's a, it. That's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you're watching VPN. You're watching this thing streaming live. If that's what you're doing, thank you for doing that. At, if you're uh, just listening to it on your own, thank you for doing thank that. Thank you for as doing well. that. We'll be back with more Scalabro Country 147. Later on the show, Rodman. Stay with us. Oh, no. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Sklarbro. I'm watching the commercials. Country. I want to tune into I this VPN check in this, thing. Yeah. And this comedy week on YouTube. Uh, of well, which we'll be a part. We, we, just, we just did some shows. Did some. We just watched one of the funniest videos. S- sports videos. We're trying of, to figure out how we can incorporate this now into our stand-up. Act. It was a video of a guy. Freestyle canoeing. Freestyle canoeing. An old guy who kind of looked like Richard Dreyfus doing like a freestyle canoeing thing. Wait, and, explain. What is freestyle canoeing? It's just where you... You, you sure to treat the canoe as if it... It's almost like freestyle skiing. Skiing or ba- skiing ballet, oh, where okay. you treat the canoe like, like it's a dance piece, and okay. you use the canoe to do an interpretive sort of. Now, dance. is it as dumb as it sounds, or is it something? Oh, else oh it's, cool? it's dumber. Way, okay. It's way dumber than it. We're making okay. it sound better than we're it we're okay. we're elevating it to an art form, and right. but it we just, just one of the carve it, things. A carve he does a routine. An older guy who looks like Richard Dreyfus, who just got off of dealing blackjack at uh, at a casino. commerce casino. <laughs> He's going around, and he he does a routine that we to lay. Lady in red. That is. That's all we'll say. Wow. Tune in and watch us as we tear at a new asshole. Uh, <laughs> and you have you are you do a live show. If people are in LA, they can catch you doing your Facebook show, which I love at UCB. Explain I do. What an, that I is. do. I do a show at, at the UCB in LA on Wednesday nights at nine thirty with uh, Paul Shear, Rob Riggle, Rob Hubel, and Owen Burke, um, at, where we get people up and. Um, we get uh, audience members up. We look at their Facebook page and we interview them about uh, different stuff. It so could be great. about their page, could be not. And we've we've met some amazing people. We met like what's the craziest thing you've well, seen? Well, there's the most a c- interesting thing you've seen thus far doing that show. That one that st- sticks out. Well, there, we always sort of say like, why should we talk to you? You know, like why right. should we why bring is you this up? And people give us their little log line, uh-huh. and those are the best. Like one yeah. kid goes. Um, 
I, what's interesting about you? <laughs> One kid goes, my mom used to put me in the Special Olympics to boost my confidence. Wow. <laughs> He's not developmentally disabled, no. but his mom was like, oh, he could use a boost. Okay. Well, I got Look, and as a parent, I know that that's wrong, but you've got to try and put your position children in a position to succeed yeah so, that's at all some point. look a lot of kid parents hold their kids back for kindergarten so they're entering yeah. older right who are we to judge mm -hmm. this uh last night we met a woman who said why should we talk what's interesting about you she goes my dad killed a guy in saudi arabia in the 80s <laughs> not during not during any war either by the oh, way no, no, 80s no. <laughs> 80s but the best one was this woman goes and funny. we're trying to get people to talk like and nobody was raising their hand and then she's like at the very end she's like <laughs> Um, I found twenty thousand dollars cash in a plastic bag once. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is this actually happens. She she was working at Tavern on the Green in New York. Uh -huh, sure, sure, now closed. The now defunct. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, it really is. So so and she sees restaurant some, in Central Park. In Central Park, very famous re old restaurant, and um and and there's parts of it that have like a big uh, like a balcony type area and you can see out in the park and she sees this guy who was uh, not homeless but was clearly messed up on something he had a Dwayne Reed bag he sits on this bench he's all messed up and then he dies he, no, no, he <laughs> walks away leaves a the bag there and she's like Huh, I wonder what that is. What is? She goes, can it's you cover that's my That's either tables? like human feces yeah. or 20000 in cash. <laughs> There's something interesting about it. So she went over. She looks, 20, stacks of cash. She's like, he had spent taken like two grand. But other than that, it was like, and and, and then we're like, so what would you do? And we're thinking, oh, she went and told the manager yeah, and they yeah. called the cops. She goes, I fucking took it. Took it. She, I goes, she goes, I put it in my locker. I took my apron. I said, I quit. I'm out. And then we're like, then what? She goes, I spent it. Yeah. She's like, I took cabs everywhere. I flew my, she was French or something. She's like, I flew my sister over. By the I way, bought a mountain bike. And you could spend, you could spend that in a week in, in New, New York. York. Two and a yeah. half months it took yeah. her. No, just by taking cabs everywhere. You oh, yeah. Spend that in a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was so great that so not only great. she actually found it, but then she's like, of course I took, of course. So I, this guy who else? lost his money, he basically, all he was doing was he was stimulating the economy. Big that time. was his stimulus package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that was, was a great way shape for it. That's great. We were at the Tavern on the Green one time. We were there for a charity event. It was like a four seasons ish yeah type a big of big outdoor there. in a in a, in a, in a <laughs> huge tent. event and we met Arnold Palmer and which <laughs> Johnny he, Damon Arnold Palmer was so nice which made me and he was so nice but I couldn't tell if he was like completely not with it or totally knew what he was doing it's like nice. He, you mean he seemed like kind of a dog? Oh, he talked to us. He, he like talked, had a full on like, engaged oh. conversation. And we, oh, and at see. some point, we're like, like five minutes in. I'm like, don't you have other people to talk? You do oh, not need I to see. be talking. Like to he us. didn't know better. No, he, he like engaged. Like right. you don't have to. You can stop yeah. talking. No, no. To us. Like gotcha. he, you're, you're, you're he engaged problem. with yeah. us and like asked us questions about us. I'm like, and as an older person, he engaged with us in a level that like some of our older relatives have never engaged with us. And we're just like, you're Arnold Palmer, right? Didn't you invent the drink? I mean, like you kind of got the feeling like he either was the mastermind behind the drink, right? Or he didn't know that it was <laughs> you know what I mean like it kind of rode that line Johnny Damon Bob Costas that was a really cool night phenomenal and then I recently was watching Arthur 2 which I highly don't recommend watching ooh, uh, ooh was that bad and I would rather the, watch the remake of Arthur yeah. and the entire uh, the entire opening scene was at Tavern on the Green you know where else Tavern on the Green was I think Tavern on the Green is where they would do um, the Folgers coffee switches like we've replaced their so and so at Tavern on the Green a world famous way, Tavern who's on going the to Tavern on the Green for full like for yeah. Just just for coffee. You know what, though? I, I catered. I used to cater a lot in New York, and I did an event. I didn't work at Tavern and Green, but we had an event there. It's one of those places. It wasn't that great. It was no, just in it's Central just Park. it's big, and it's in Central yeah. Park. And, like, the green carpeting was tattered at, places, yeah, yeah, yeah. at parts, and so it's closed now. It's yeah, closed now. As it should be. So it's done. Uh, Frank, it's, it's a good lead-in, because uh, we have, uh, I love these stories. We have more crazy stories. And we got Robin coming up in the next segment, so uh, everybody sit tight. Frank on the zeros and ones because it's a computer. Give us a little quick hits music. <laughs> quick hits music, and we'll get into this. Let's get into the deep, shall All right, we? Th this is a fact, and you should know this, that just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money on things. Okay, this is this is, this is the opposite to side yeah. to the to twenty thousand in a bag. Yeah, you can though. I will point out you that could. you can. If you spend a lot of money on something, in other words, let me put it this way, you better damn well know that it's money well spent and it's worth it. And Mario Williams, who's a defensive end for the Buffalo Bills, can attest to that. Mario Williams bought a $785,000 engagement ring for his fiance. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna... telling that this guy how to spend Have his money. Have you ever been engaged before? No. Would you ever? What would you spend? What's the the height, the ceiling on what you would spend? Even if if you if 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 you were working on a show that's been going Are for years. Are you involved years? in a relationship right now? I'm not, but if I, I don't even without get, knowing how much those things cost, 
four grand. Four grand. At the ma- would be the max. Totally fair assessment. Four to I think that would that and I'm ten saying ten grand that, is like there's a part of me in my head that's going what? what? Four. Grand. I'm just guessing. I gotta find now. a bag of cash before I right. make that. Yeah. Uh, this guy he, he did he does have a hundred million dollars. He made it signed a hundred million dollar contract. But buy her a two hundred thousand dollar ring. Throw, throw the ring hunt. and a hundred thousand dollar car in with it, and be like, here, yeah. happy, happy in the marriage. glove compartment. Buy her a two hundred thousand dollar car and throw. There, we just sold you half a million, saved you half a million dollars, Mario Williams. There, so yeah, you better be seven hundred eighty five k for a ring. You better damn well be sure that's the right one. Like you should not be fighting. No, no, no. for seven hundred eighty five million dollars, you could buy a person who would go down in a mine and get you one if you lose oh, it. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah, yes. if this one came one away, like person, you could buy. You could buy a whole bunch, two or three. Of Family of people. Yes, seven hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. That way, you could screw up with like the wrong. You got a woman. guy on call. You got a minor call your on diamond call. guy. Say, get me another one. I just screwed up. Yeah, seven hundred eighty-five thousand. You got him. You can. You find own him. the guy. Yeah. So apparently, the woman broke off the engagement right before she got the right ring. after she right got after the she ring. got right after she got the ring and then absconded with it. That's what, what? William said. That's what William said. And okay. He, and he didn't like it too much. All right. So that... he's suing her for the ring back because yes. Lord knows he needs it. Yeah. Yes. And and uh, what's he going to do with it? I mean, I'm sure if he gets it back, the next girl is going to be oh so happy to receive <laughs> the damage. Yeah, there's no goods. bad mojo with that thing right now. And oh, what? man. I mean, come on. By the way, most women don't even notice that kind of thing. Yeah. Women aren't detail-oriented. They oh, don't right. notice that. And by the way- I have a friend, and you know this person too. I won't say their name. Don't. They are um, happily married now to somebody else, but <laughs> <laughs> they were getting engaged to somebody else, and his soon-to-be- Fiance and soon to be ex fiance found on his web browser like like a, a, a ring that he was gonna buy on Craigslist or some used ring. Ooh. That little put a little bit of a damper on yeah. the proposal. Yes. That's gonna put a little uh, you don't wanna you just don't wanna discount it. You just yeah. don't wanna That's something you yeah. gotta kinda even if you go full boat, even if it's not great. And by the way, that's not something you can just take back to the store and be like, yeah, it didn't work out. Because at that point yeah. they're not gonna they're not gonna give you your money back. At best, they give you store credit, which you don't yeah. want that. Seven hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. What are you gonna do with that? Seven hundred eighty-five thousand dollars at that store. I don't right. know what else you're gonna do. I wonder what kind of sexual favors he was expecting from his fiance. Yeah, after for seven hundred eighty-five k. He's he's like, you're gonna let me punch you in the back, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Williams' fiance, Aaron Marzuki. Let's zoo. call her the zoo. Let's call her the zoo, zoo. right? Yep. Let's call her the zoo. That's she. What she's claiming he broke off the engagement. That seems about right. Yeah, he went to the trouble to buy you a seven hundred eighty five thousand. Yeah. And then was like, ring. nah, I'm not feeling yeah. this. But keep the ring. Go ahead, you take it. But that may have actually what been what happened, Jay. Williams apparently broke up with the Zook, who was an employee of the Houston Texans. William played for that team. Uh, a few days she after broke, she broke he broke up with her several times. Even a few days after they he proposed to her uh, and gave her the ten carat ten diamond ring. So wow. they were in the Bahamas. Williams got upset, broke up with her, chartered a private jet How many jet carrots back. do you think Carrot Top gives? <laughs> I bet he's got enough diamond money. Ring. I bet three. And it's got to be I'm working really hard. A diamond it. in the shape of a carrot. Yeah. I bet it's a telephone that just rings. <laughs> <laughs> Did it. <laughs> uh, there it is. Oh, uh, God. To me, I so he chartered a private plane to head back and just left her in the Bahamas. This just to me sounds like a guy who was like in the Bahamas like, can I charter a plane from here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should probably have try you seen it. That, have you seen that 30 for 30 called Broke? Yes. I just started. Uh, I mean, I've watched we talked about it, Vince Young earlier. We were trying to get the numbers right. He was one of those guys. Oh bro- man, broke. I mean, you're you're really into the thirty for thirty. I've they're so good, right? They're they're just 30s, so yeah. good. But that, yeah, I'm that. gonna hand it to Bill Simmons. Those yeah, are yeah. really, really, really well done. Those are so amazing. Every single one of them. I mean, the last one I saw, the Elway to Mar- Elway to Marino. Oh, uh, I draft that. one is from the eighty three. Okay. The footage is remarkable. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's really so cool, good. but the broke is amazing. Everybody, yeah. and that's really the way it goes, you know. Like guys, the don't crazy really... one was like a guy like Bernie Kosar, who was like a quarterback for the Browns. Oh and yeah, like, just seemed like kind of a regular guy. Yeah, and he just got housed. Yeah, and he had a career. He had a nice long career. Well, yeah, you guys were talking about car wash. That guy that got busted at a car wash. Oh, yeah, I guess Brett. it wasn't his car wash, but that, no, they were just talking about like. I don't know why we all buy car washes. Yeah, exactly. They like, all Lenny buy Dykstra car washes. made a ton of money on car washes because it's just recognizable. Yeah. People need their cars washed. Yes. So the Zook is saying that uh, she had no intention of selling. The, she has no intention of selling the ring. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, she just wants to. By keep the way, it. neither of them can agree on when he proposed to her. That's never a good sign. Right. Yeah, he's Day. like saying like the nineteenth, and she's saying the twentieth. Right? They're saying he, he's saying I don't remember if it was the nineteenth or the twentieth. You know that's a bad sign. That's uh, yeah. probably must have been a really meaningful cocaine o'clock <laughs> for both of them. The cusp. But what's crazy is that like she's saying she's keeping it in like a safe. Tip. She's not going to get rid of it. She's not going to sell the ring. What are you going to just crack that out? I just want to trade it for stuff. Yeah, no. I just oh, I just want. No, she wants to wear it on special occasions, Bar like on like a second date. With a new guy? <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, try to live up to Can that. Can you imagine the Zook asking her new boyfriend, uh, honey, do you know where my 10 carat diamond ring is? <laughs> do you know where that is? Because she would lose it as well. You know the one that my previous fiance gave me and told me to keep, uh, but then sued me for? Yeah. I want to wear, wear that to sushi tonight. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It, 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 but she was an employee, and that's this goes back to the oldest thing. You don't shit where you eat. You definitely don't. He it's, dipped his pen, his pen in company ink and then in that's... Houston, and now he's in Buffalo. That's that just that a rule. Just doesn't fly. Just yeah. ask, ask. You don't Brett don't date. You don't like. It's like you can't even date performers if you're a comedian. That's a hard. Have I you ever worry. dated a performer? Oh yeah. Been involved. That's tough. That's tough. It's really tough. Yeah yeah. Have they ever like gone on stage and done material about you or about your failed yes. relationship? How hard was yes. that? Yes. How hard it was that? It wasn't too cool. No, <laughs> that's, that's not to too cool. It's happened. It wasn't that's too a, cool. And that's such a shocker because you would think it'd be cool. Yeah, you'd yeah. You think it'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet you'd it's think it'd be so a narcissistic yeah. part of you is like, wow, I really made an impact. <laughs> but the worst part is <laughs> uh, sitting through it. I've had it happen to me. I hope, yeah, I had it happen to me in New York. I'm not going to say uh, who, but it was pretty uncomfortable. Not fun. Oh yeah. I'll, not tell, fun. You, I'll tell you at another time in an undisclosed moment. Nice way to really leave yourself out there, Jay. In this next story, the headline really says it all. The Astros, Houston Astros are investigating a fan who pretended a hot dog was his penis on live TV. We think. We don't know. Now, apparently, a fan sitting in the posh Diamond Club section of Minute Maid Field right behind home plate, he either put a hot dog they're saying it's could a, be a cigar. cigar. I'm telling you, a cigar isn't that floppy. No. Or he say, dangled saw his, the video his pe- Or it could be like a rubber penis. I don't know what it was. While the Astros were playing and Albert Pujols was uh, playing against the Angels, this guy against gets it really quickly. Stands. Do we have the video? Let, let's see if we can show a little bit of this video. If you guys can find the video. Gaddis has opened some eyes. There it is. Oh, there it is. The now they zoom in a little bit out. more so you can see it. Right. Right. Watch this. And, whoa. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is a little closer. Zoom and, somehow. Oh, oh, what is that? What is, what is that? What is it? That's a hot dog, I think. No. That's a hot dog. It okay. has to be a hot dog. It's a victim- I love it. That's how it is. That's a victimless crime. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. To me, that's something Besser would do. Like, didn't yes. Besser have a sketch where he, like, yeah. Donnie the, on the On the Today Show, they pranked uh, Al Roker. <laughs> Where he had yeah. short shorts on and that long a white huge cock. penis, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like kids, like the, it was a fake disease about little kids who have giant dicks. Oh, Donnie, <laughs> what's his name? I forgot the kid's name. I, I think it was just Little Donnie. Little Donnie. I think, I little think Donnie. the Astros are trying to cover their Astros by saying it was a hot dog or a cigar. I still believe that that was. You can get penis. busted for classic jokes now. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he thinks that's his real penis. No way, that was a cigar. <laughs> well, it's not. that's his real. Come it no could way. have been a hot dog, but I, you it's know. It's not a, Look, if it was a hot dog. It wasn't a cigar. It was an uncooked hot dog. How do you get an uncooked? You got to bring that. You got to smuggle that you in. Can't, you can't buy an uncooked, uncooked hot dog at a stadium. No, they can't. will not do that because if you eat it and you get sick, then you sue the they stadium. They get sued. Oh, so you think, oh, so so he would have had to bring a raw hot dog This from is home. so premeditated. Really? If, if he did, I don't know. I think I think he, 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 after his like fourth beer, he got the idea, let the hot dog cool. He bought a dog. Let, let it, cool. it cool and let it soften. You know? But that seemed pinkish, like not like it had seemed it uncooked to me. Seemed uncooked, but I don't know. If it was his penis, it seemed uncooked. You know, you got to get this on MythBusters so they can just <laughs> test out I the different po- possibilities. I can't, I can't. I thought. By the way, those are the seats. That's Astros. Those are the seats that like George Bush and Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush has sat in that seat. That's the Bush's seat. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that's crossed. Barbara Bush's mind wants to just show up with a shorter skirt and no underwear on. Yeah. Bush shot. shot. Bush shot. Yes. The ultimate Bush shot. There it is. Finally, the Astros said that they are investigating the matter with the proper authority. You mean the cops, right? I don't what, know what other authorities? With the silly are, police. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there, are there? Is there an authority? Comedy you, cops. The, co- <laughs> the Coast Guard. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Go to Corpus. Tailhook. I think it's some folks from Tailhook. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. skilled the 20th in this anniversary area. Of that. Is it the 20th anniversary? 20th of Tailhook anniversary convention? of Tailhook. I oh, so that, yeah. And the military is having all these other scandals to commemorate. Right. right. Yeah, this nice. is a new one. This is called. Uh, <laughs> is hot there a dog special like special exhibitionist unit of the Houston PD? The Junk Squad. The Junk Squad. That they're just there. They're there to take down streakers. Exhibitionists, the occasional wavy. I hot wish dog. there was just a tits and ass unit to every police department. There should be. 
I love mm-hmm. it. Guys yeah. in incredibly short shorts who insist on crossing their legs at events. <laughs> on crossing their legs them. And this guy, uh, the hottest dog of all. The worst fear, I think, is that everyone in baseball is that this will inspire copycat crimes. Because it, it got should. picked up I a little bit. So. You hope so. We would. We can only hope. It is Instead baseball. of the wave? Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a stadium-wide. It's a stadium-wide flap. Elephant walk. Call it the flap. <laughs> the flap. <laughs> you, you don't want to be in an important juncture of a playoff game later this season and see someone hanging brain at Camden Yards while you <laughs> Darvish is pitching. No, you don't. Yeah, I got you. your you Dar. I got I your, your Darvish right, right here, here, you. <laughs> Finally, we've got another bowling story, and no, it doesn't involve uh, Terrell Owens, who recently purchased, become a, purchased and a, is a professional bowler. And is by, that right? He was on. Go on, you know. Yeah, he was. Was, was he, he cool? He, he was. He was nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you say about somebody who's I, I didn't crazy. Inter- I didn't interact with him that much. Um, you didn't Gelman, see about did Gelman service? interact with him? Gelman probably went up to him and was Gelman, like, he probably massaged him hey, for no Tio, reason. Gel- no, Gelman interacted a lot with Bob Costas, which I didn't hear much about. We love. I love Costas. Costas is awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Great dude. The, it, it, and if you want to watch something really cool that Costas did, go online and watch his eulogy of Stan Musial. Oh, unbelievable! I thought you were going to say his. Remember his show later? That was a great yeah. show. Awesome show. Great interview later. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it does involve Tio. It involves another bowler who shot himself in the foot, literally while bowling. Before we get to that, we have to mention that one of our listeners said when we mentioned this whole To story about the new PBA Pro Bowler Association, which is teams bowling against, they each mentioned other. that Chris Hardwick is an owner or partial owner of a team because his father was a professional bowler. Yeah. And Chris Hardwick is a phenomenal bowler. Did you ever do the uh, bowling on the Nerdist show? No, but I heard I, I, I did know that he he's is, really good. He's really good. Oh yeah. man, he's yeah, so he's good. good. So wow. uh, so he's part. Of, wow. I kind of want to start a Hardwick To beef. Yeah, can we do that? Can we yeah. start that a pro a PBA beef? Well, hey, start as far as you guys know, he was talking smack about Hardwick. He was talking so, so Hardwick, smack. get back on it. Come yep. on. And Hardwick. I feel like they'd have to settle it by just playing a game of lawn bowling. Yeah, yes. <laughs> or lawn the, darts. Or yeah. to the death. Yeah. Well, lawn darts is to the death. That's exactly. a game where the people die. die. Everything's better when it's settled to the death. It is. It is. At any rate, thank you for pointing that out. And speaking of guns and bowling, in Jupiter, Florida, yes. an out-of-shape bowler was about to bowl, swung the ball back. I accidentally knocked the gun in his pocket. It went off and shot him in the foot. Thereby scaring an entire bowling alley full of people who just thought he farted really loud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what? He did a service to 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 help f- combat the image that bowlers are huge pussies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> now like, we know that bowlers are tough guys. They're, they're tough guys. They're tough you guys. pack heat. You put yeah. a serious and the fact you, you're you're that threatened. Like, where are you? Don't Did go you, to that bowling alley right. if you Who think you Who packs heat yeah. for that? First of all, Jupiter, Florida. We're not, not, it's not like Pensacola yeah. or like a weird the part panhandle. of Tampa. Yeah. No, no, no. The this, panhandle. This Jupiter, is, Florida is where Tiger Woods, the night that his wife chased him with the nine iron. Oh, really? That's Jupiter, That's Florida. That's Jupiter, Florida. Jupiter, like, Florida is where like the course. Cardinals, I think, play yeah. like their, my, their, uh, their spring training. Who's like, uh, honey, we're meeting the uh, Shallowitzes at Strike and Spare at six. <laughs> I, I got my wallet, my car keys. Where's my Glock? Does anybody <laughs> see my Glock? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, is my Glock clean? <laughs> is it why? clean? She's like, honey, why are you taking your gun to? And actually, he's I'll like, tell you why. I'll tell you why. Marlon Shalowitz, he hogs that hand blower. Yeah. Swear, he's not going to hog it tonight. That's right. Or he's going to, or he's going to, or I'm going to put this right in the small of his back and say, you want more air? <laughs> you want more air, bitch? Here you go. <laughs> you want more Take air? more air. I'll give you more air. <laughs> All right. So you're an idiot. You bring a gun out to a bowling alley. So. If you're worried about getting jumped, like you said, go bowl somewhere else. Yeah. Or go to an Olive Garden. Don't go bowling if you think it's that Or a movie. Or somewhere, anywhere where you're not swinging around a 14-pound orb. Or listen to the ska band, Let's Go Bowling. That's right. Why not? That's the safest thing you can do. No, that's why the guy who danced for Mighty Mighty Boston's never carried a gun. His (laughs) arm was always swinging right by his legs. Even Plaxico Burris was like, this is stupid. All right, I'm assuming that the gun was just loose in his pocket, like next to his iPhone. Safety off. Yes. Ready to pick up the spare, guys. You should, if you're going to bowl like that, you should have like a shotgun holster. (laughs) Like a, over the back. Or like Washington. In yeah, whatever cop, that movie. in your ankle. Cops where it's like a gun bra. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of like across <laughs> your chest and it's there. It's yeah. across my heart. It's like, show it. In Florida, I think you can show it. By the way, who bowls that close to their leg, too? That's just, like, that's even bad pro bowling. bowlers are like... That's the most embarrassing part. Pro bowlers, you, you got to let it hang down and spin it, spin it really out wide. You got to get it out there. So he winds and fires and literally fires the gun. Fires. Play scat. Can you imagine the guy in the neck, the lane next to him? He's probably like, "All right, fine." fine. <laughs> Jesus, they take bowling courtesy a lot, really seriously. Yeah, here. Lane yeah you can bowl first. I'll let I you guess. go first next time. Jesus, Jesus Christ! Are you guys? Can you guys bowl? Are you? Good I actually, I'm I, pretty good. I bowled a 220 once. He did. Really? I bowled a two. I bowled like a 215 once. But I've been taking my son bowling because it's a really fun activity for like. How old? 
He's four and a half. Oh, okay. So it, he actually likes it, and he's pretty good at and it. And his son packs heat. My yeah, son he has a gun. I let him bring his gun. Yeah. But um, no, but what's crazy is that since I've been bowling with him and it's like there's no stakes ever, I'm like, I wonder if I could develop like a hook and because I always just bowled straight. Now I have a hook. Really? So I'm actually pretty good. And it's super fun. And like I'm getting good just because he likes to go. So I bowl with him. It's fun. Bowling's I'm, one of those things that I never think about until every four years when I play it. And when then someone I'm, has a bowling party. And you yeah. And go. you're like, oh, birthday. OK. Yeah, and I'm then good. I really like, ugh. Bowling is long. Yeah, it bowling's takes a like, long time. Bowling's to like bowl. an election. Yeah, it comes happens every four years. <laughs> yeah, throughout the night, you're like, and God, process, this is taking yeah. so long. The no, there's process. a moment where you're like, this is actually pretty fun, and then you're like, oh, this isn't fun, and then you're like, it's fun again, and then you're like, it's still happening. It's like mini golf. It's like mini golf ah. seems like it's gonna be fun. It's gonna take eight hours, hours to play mini golf. A oh, long time. Uh, so I wonder if his wife or uh, let's be honest, his live-in girlfriend was yeah. ever like as he shot himself because there is a picture of him sitting down in pain, but clearly he's. Not like dead, right? Do you think his wife or live-in girlfriend at the time was like, "It's not the first time that's happened." To <laughs> up, <laughs> to uproarious <laughs> laughter. Yeah, his gun's always going off. That's how that works. You gotta what love can that. You Crazy thing is, he did have a permit to carry the gun, so, so he has he, no charges. He will In face Florida? no charges. Yeah, yeah. face no charges. No charges. But what's really worse? The charges or the fact that he'll never be allowed to bowl in Jupiter ever again. <laughs> That's it. But this That's guy, God bear. only knows what it is. It's his uh, cross to bear. This, I don't know if we've played this on the show before. This is uh, Tim Maia. Uh, brother, father, mother, sister. I uh, couldn't figure out what to uh, name the song. No. But it is a damn good song. It's a jam. It's a joint. I love it. Scarborough Country 147. Seth Morris is here with us. Watch his, If you're in L.A. on a Wednesday night, watch him do his Facebook show and watch him Come all over. Down. Come on down. You go to UCB LA.com or UCB uh, Theater UCB LA. Theater LA. Theater Tray. Theater Tray. Theater T-R-E. L-A. UCB yeah. Theater Tray LA. Check them out. Uh, the Facebook show. We'll be back with Dennis Rodman. we got to find out what's going on. A lot of stuff going yes, on. Yes, you can see, if you want to, you can stick, stick around. around for Absolutely. All right, fine. He's going to stick around for Rodman right after this. Globbro Country 147. Stay with us. Wake up, Africa. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Final segment. Uh, I want to remind everybody to go to our uh, go to our uh, website, supersclars.com. Sign up your email. We'll send you little tidbits, fun stuff. Check out the Anna mashup on uh, VPN or on YouTube if you want to see the Anna mashup of the two of us and John Hamm talking about uh, the Thunder from Down Under performing at the halftime show of the OKC Thunder sh- uh, basketball games. Super fun, and it is sort of fortuitous because had they maybe had that, they might have stayed they in the playoffs. Won. Uh, we are yeah. at Sklar Brothers on Twitter. You are at... You know what? I, I'm, I'm not an active Twitterer anymore. But was Bob Duca twi- Twittering? Not anymore. I haven't. I've, I've kind of dropped off the radar of social media, All unfortunately. Right. Then you on, I'm a uh, Luddite. Are you on Friendster? <laughs> I'll give out my address if people want to snail mail me. Yeah, yeah. snail mail. <laughs> <laughs> I will give nothing everything. Creepy out. could happen there. Yeah, right? nothing, no, nothing bad. Oh, no. God, no. It's like buying a uh, engagement ring on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, uh, there. That's a relationship that's going to work out. It is really going to work out. <laughs> uh, I will say this: that Dennis Rodman is in the news again. Yes. Um, I want to talk about. Sort well, of, our, he's 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 taking shots at the at Obama, and he's talking about like like backing his boy Kim Jong Un. Uh, is that how you pronounce that? Am Kim I Jong-un. wrong? Ch- Kim Jong Un. Thank right. you. That's right. Uh, he's the guy who did Gangnam Style, right? Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. <laughs> uh, so yeah. we're trying to get. In, yeah, I slipped in again. Let's game, get but. him. Let's get him let's on. Get the, Robin on the phone and see what what he's up to right now. Because oh, Robin. I don't know where I don't know where we're calling to. This we could be calling in Denny's for all we know, or IHOP. Where did he break up with this? I wonder where he gets his calls. Like, does he forward his calls somewhere? This is like at a super. Dennis Dennis Robin, it's the Sklar Brothers. How you doing? (laughs) And and Seth Morris. How you doing, buddy? Oh, Seth Morris. Uh, You know, I'm doing pretty good, man. What's what's going on? What's going on over there? Uh, <laughs> well, you, you seemed a little unprepared that we were going to call, even though we had really set this. We time prepped this whole thing for are, a long time. Are you? Yeah, okay? No, I was. Uh, I was just playing some ColecoVision over here. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, that's the kind of old game system. I like to do old school sometimes, you know, play pitfall, whatever. <laughs> you know, all but, right, okay. All right, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I want to talk about some of the recent comments you made. First of all, you've been in the news a lot, and whenever you're in the news, I always like to bring you on the show. But uh, there was, well, you, 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 you said, criticized uh, President Obama over this whole Kenneth Bay scenario. Americans sentenced to 15 years of hard labor for plotting to overthrow the North Korean government, and you say you could have gotten him freed, or you could get him freed. Is that how? Uh, yeah, no, I'll definitely get him out of there. If, uh, you know, all Obama got to do, uh, you know, he's just got to give me a call, say, look, Dennis, you know, just like uh, Phil Jackson used to throw me in the game, you know, say, look, Dennis, you got to go take care of business, you know, get under the, you know, get under the rim and start uh, banging it up. I-, I would go over there and just, you know, I talk to Kim, uh, you know, Supreme Leader, as I call him, Nacho Supreme, because, you know, he thinks that's very funny. You, you call him Nacho uh, Supreme? Yeah, he would yeah, think that's Yeah, yeah, no, you know, he, know, he loves everything America, you know, he loves Taco Bell, he loves, like, Sometimes I call him Kimbo Spice because, you know. No, like, you don't. Kimbo yeah, Spice. no, I do. I do. I call him that. Yeah, okay. he likes that. He like all kind of nicknames, you know. I call him, I call him, I call him Little Funyun. You know, he likes that too. <laughs> but um, uh, basically I told Obama, you know, I said it on my, my Twitter. I said, come on, man. You know, what's going on? It's just All you got to do is talk to this guy. You said I we mean, got a black know, president can't even go and talk to Kim. Is that what you... What did uh, you yeah, mean? I said he. Well, I, uh, yeah, I said look, Obama can't do you know S to the H I T, which he can't. Yeah, uh, you don't, I don't think he say can? Some stuff like that on your podcast, but uh, it's all right. And uh, so I just I told, you know I just told him, you know, look, I'll go over there. Look, this ain't even about like you know plotting to overthrow the North Korean government. That's not what it's about. He no. was uh, he was trying to throw a pickup game, and Kim Jong didn't like the way he was playing. Okay, okay. So that's what it was. And about. this is and you basically said all this to TMZ. You didn't go to C-SPAN or ABC or no. That? I don't want to go to that. No, you know, I know Harvey. Harvey's a good guy. You know, he's a great guy. He's like Harvey Levin. They're both good guys. They're not both good guys. Uh, those, neither those, of them are good. Neither of them are good guys. Great guys. guys. Yeah. Well, Harvey yeah, Levin actually, is a great yeah. guy. I don't They're wanna... the epitome of what isn't a great guy. I feel like. I'm sorry. Am I wrong? Well, I mean, you know, look, um, you never, you never, you never been to a TMZ party, obviously. You okay, know, no, you we've go over never there, been there. Like, <laughs> that stuff is off the hook. All right, Harvey so knows how to slow down. So you, didn't, me, you, me. Didn't, <laughs> you didn't want to go back on Stephanopoulos? Uh, no, I don't like that guy. You know, Stephanopoulos. Uh, you know, to me, that guy. Yeah, he don't know what he's doing. He looks like a Smurf. <laughs> he does not look like no, a no, Smurf. No, no. He's a. He's yeah, a no, do you like me, anyone over like there? He, Are you a fan of anybody over there at ABC? Um, yeah, I like, uh, oh, yeah, I like Kogan Roberts. You like Kogan like Roberts? <laughs> you like and, uh, You know, if he was, she were going to host the show, I'd go back in a heartbeat, you know. Because, like, Pippin, uh, Scotty, Scotty and I, back in the day, we used to say, like, you know, we'd get on that, you know. You say you'd get, you get on, on Kogan Roberts. Roberts. Why? What do you like oh, about yeah. her? Do you like her authoritativeness? Well, you know, I think uh, back in the day, what I liked about her was she had a, uh, you know, she had, like, a real uh, kind of a pompadour hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, look at that. She wear like a church lady dress. Look like you know she does. Like she all conservative, but I know she get freaky under there. You think you uh, get freaky under there? All right. Well, look, if you, anyone would know, if anyone would, would have that perception. I mean, it's Seth you. Morris is, has been with her. You dated her briefly. Is that correct? She's a dynamite lady. Yeah, she's yeah. a she's dynamite lady. Oh, that I mean, guy. No, I know. I know who that is. Hey man, let, let me say something to that guy. Can yeah, I say something ahead. to him? Yeah, yeah go say ahead. something to Seth. Yeah, all right. I want to uh, congratulations on that, uh, that that late night thing, man. That's that's pretty cool. I heard about that. Oh, Seth Myers. Seth Myers. This is Seth Morris. This is Seth Morris. I don't know that guy. What's okay, all right. Does he play basketball? I know he doesn't play basketball. Not since like, ninth grade. He did, he did. I know Garrett Morris, man. He was like the first black guy on SNL, man. He was awesome. This Garrett, Garrett Morris. You mean yeah. Garrett Morris? You called him Gary Morris. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, well, whatever. That guy's funny. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. So I want to say you said that uh, that uh, he was respons- that you are responsible for the nuclear stand down because missiles were actually they were, driv- they were pointed at the United States and then they were driven away. Do, are you going to claim? Oh, yeah, this- I cooled it down. No, you, you cooled, cooled it down. down. That down. How'd you cool it down? Yeah, I, I, uh, I basically just uh, I talked to Kim Jong. I said, look, you put those missiles, uh, you know. Back in the hole, and I'll send you a signed uh, autographed basketball by signed by the by the Paxton brothers. <laughs> when no. you said put and, the uh, missile back in the hole, were you talking? Did it have anything to do with that's what the, I tell the, my dog. The proliferation of weapons, or were you talking about something different? Um, you know, look, he and I have a we have a code language for sure. You know, he was like he, for a minute there, he was like Dennis, how you know I'm getting freaking when I'm on the phone with you? I'm like, yeah, I know you. <laughs> you know you. I know, I know you. you. I, I hear you got. Uh, he's like you know, doing them Gangnam Style over there. Yeah, you know, sure he's is. crazy. And you sure. had to bring but, that uh, up. But uh, yeah, you know, then I said, look, I'm trying to talk about the global thermonuclear war or whatever. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, you can't do that because you know I, I know you don't want war. You told me that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he mm-hmm. doesn't want war. No, he doesn't want. Oh, right, let's switch gears. Uh, he don't want war. I mean, he, he don't want war. I'm gonna, I'm gonna credit. He, does, he doesn't want a big. He doesn't want a Big Mac and a front row ticket to uh, the Staples Center. Sure. Okay, well, we can, yeah, we I can arrange that, that for him. That can uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch gears completely because you were also in the news for another reason. Uh, the Kardashians, Kendall and Kylie, were at a Pacific Sunwear at the Brea Mall recently. And you just showed up. Did you know that they were going to be there? Here's a picture of you just showing up, hanging out with them. Yeah. Did you know that they were going to be there? Did we lose him? Are you there? Dennis, are you there? He's at a Pacific Sunwell right now. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, man. I, I, I got a call on the red line. I had to take that. Oh, okay, fine. All right. Was that Kim Jong-un? Yeah, yeah, no, he's actually listening to us right now. Okay, oh, good, great, right, good. Well, it's live. Welcome, it's streaming welcome. Live. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get, see what you guys don't know, and, and Obama don't know because he don't know shit. Uh, oh, easy. This, uh, you know, North Korea, they man, they, they got like technology you don't even see for like thirty years here. Okay, all right, I okay. buy that. Fine. They don't even have cell phones, man. What, what is, is it? it? They just got. They just talk. They just talk to their noses. They talk to their noses, and then that goes to where they want it to go. How do you know who you're yeah, dialing? It goes up in the sky, and I don't, I don't know how that works. Whatever. Right. But I went to, uh, I went to the Brea Mall because I was like, look, man, these these girls, you know, they already kind of hit their peak, and I can see that they're going on the way down. So all right, there's I, I got to give them a, a lesson on how to maintain your 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 non-celebrity celebrity. Okay, so yeah, no, they, they, no, he's talking about it from strictly from like a celebrity perspective. Fine, they hit their peak, but they're like just young teenagers. When do they hit their peak? No, nah, they probably they they, they kind of burned burned out around thirteen or fourteen. You know, it's all it's all downhill for them now. You know, when you when you're sitting in the Brea Mall at a pack sun, you you, you know what's over unless you're Jim Paxson. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Unless you're Jim Paxson, that's right. Are you John Paxson? Uh, uh, so can you relate to these guys? Do you feel like did you share any impart any wisdom? How much time did you spend with them? Uh, you know, uh, the security guards kind of wanted me to move it along. Okay. Cause like you know. <laughs> There's a lot of girls there trying to get autographs and talk to them and whatnot. But sure. you know, uh, you trying to school you know, and Kylie, they knew, they knew that we were like, uh, they got we like souls, you know, yeah. connected. So yeah. yeah, I stayed around for about uh, two hours. All right. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, so I gave them some advice. I said, look, first thing you need to do is uh, get away from that weak ass daddy. What the weak ass daddy? Are you talking about Bruce Jenner? Bruce Jenner. Oh yeah. Oh I was, yeah. I was gonna say you spent. I don't, I don't. They may put him on a Wheaties box, but uh, you should have been on a Rice Krispie box. That guy's got no he got no game. Oh wow. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that doesn't would, seem like much. Well, I mean, his point. wife. Uh, his wife took away uh, took away all his manhood. You know what I'm saying she would never do that with me. No, what, what, would you do? what would you do? What would you do? What, what would the worm, worm do? do to Chris Jenner? Well, once you it's, uh, look, once you get a taste of the worm, just like with a tequila bottle. You you ain't never you ain't never coming back from that. You know you you're like going to another universe. It's you like never going touch to another, tequila you know, again, is what happens. You, yeah, you, <laughs> you, you back off. Uh, say to yourself, I'm never going to have that again. Yeah. But but no, believe me, believe me, this guy, you know, uh, maybe he's good with a pole vault or whatever, but he don't know how to handle ladies. So wh- how would you I, handle I agree it? With that? What if Chris Jenner started talking out the side of her mouth to you? What would you say? Um, I, I would uh, I would say give Carmen a call. Give, give Carmen, Carmen a call. call. Listen. Uh, I, I don't never do no. I don't preach no violence. But I'm, I'm I'm not going to hold back my tongue. That's for sure. You no, know, yeah. I got some piercings in there that could be painful. But that's well, right. There it is. You and you'll send Rick Mahorn to her. He might. You, you might send know. Rick Mahorn. All right, Worm. Thanks for. I'll, uh, send, I'll send both of them. I'll send. I'll send Mahorn and Lambert. That's Look right. That. That's right. That's who he All is. Right. That's who you are. Thank you very much, Dennis. Worm. Bye. I appreciate it. Good luck, man. Thanks for keeping things. All right, cool. man. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about that nuclear war stuff. That ain't gonna happen. Not on my watch. Okay. No way. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad Obama can't do shit. I can. All, All right. right. I'm glad you. you're watching, you, Dennis. I'm glad you're watching. All right, there it is. There, there we go. Wow. That's a show. There we go. That's a show. That's awesome. Seth that. Morris, thank Seth, you so much. You this is VPN live streaming she right is, here. We're You're watching inside it. the internet right we're now. We're inside, inside the, the internet, internet right now. Works? Yes. I uh, want to thank, of course, Frank Capella. Why do you got that shoulder? Hey, that shoulder here. Hey, stick it out nice over there. Job, you of lousy Of course, Seth bum. Morris, all the people here at VPN, Jeff. Uh, and Scott and everybody here at Earwolf and Lauren, uh, Dan Van Kirk. This is uh, Baltimore Blues number one. Deer Tick, I'm just yes. loving them. Yes. These guys are so good. Fantastic. Uh, again, guys, Chicago, get your tickets now. We got the live podcast, and then come back and see us do stand up. It's going to be so much fun. That's right. Up Theater, the 30th, 31st, and 1st of June. Come check us out there. Go to supersclars.com. Uh, and check out, just sign up your email and check out when we're playing live because we'll be coming near you. Get we the got, live show. Come on. Just get the live show at earwolf.com as well. Go to the store. Come on, man. Come, come on, on, man. Skip. What are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? I mean, come on, man. 
Uh, we love you guys. Uh, next week, we have great shows lined up coming up. Yes. Really, really fun shows coming up. We're going to have Rich Eisen back on the show. Uh, we're going to have Tony Hale from Arrested Development. That show's about to drop again. Our friend Karen Kilgariff, who was on uh, was the head writer show. And the head writer for the Ellen Show for The Ellen while. Show for many years. We'll get into stuff with her and just a longtime friend. She's going to be on the show. Brian Baumgartner from The Office, which just finished up. He's coming on the show. Jada Rubin. Jada Rubus coming up. We got a great people up and down. Stay with us. Larbro Country. Have a great week. Punch Waterfalls, and we'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs>